the world may say that God's not real, though they say that Jesus is dead, though they mock at his name and bring him to shame, I believe Where will you be in a hundred years? Not going to be here. Unless we're reigning in glory in the millennium. But technically speaking, we're, none of us will be in this world as it is now. Everybody in this building tonight will one day be in heaven or hell. Doesn't matter what you believe. That's what Jesus said. Somebody said, well, I, my opinion, that's just what it is, your opinion. And I'm going by a book tonight that was written before your great-grandmother was born and has never been proven wrong one time. I'm going by what it said. It's not my opinion. Opinions like armpits. Everybody got two and they both stink. And so our opinions don't count. It's what God said that matters. Tonight, is there such a place as a real is there such a place let's think about that for a few minutes tonight this is an unusual service you've probably never been in a service like this tonight I am and uh, I'm praying we have prayed for a whole year our church has fasted and prayed that God would get hold of your heart tonight and make heaven real to you hold right in the more I realize that what's down here don't really matter, but what's up there is what we're going to keep forever. If somebody put it, we give up what we cannot keep to gain what we cannot lose. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul wrote by the Holy Spirit in verse 4, for we that are in this tabernacle, talking about his body, do groan, be in burden. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. That verse is saying, Paul was saying, I really desire a better place to live than what I've got now. Heaven, heaven. Are you going to heaven tonight? Everyone's going to heaven or hell. You might be like the old lady one time. Uh, a skeptic got her, and she said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to do this. When I get to heaven, I'm going to do that. And a skeptic got her, he said, you believe all that stuff in that Bible? And she said, yes, sir, I sure do. I believe every word of it. And the man said, now, lady, come on now, man. You don't believe all them crazy stories about that fish and the whale swallowing Jonah and stuff like that. She said, yes, sir, I absolutely do. And I believe the, the whale swallowed Jonah. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask him about it. She, he said, well, what if he ain't in heaven? She said, well, you can ask him then. Yeah. Yeah. And what she was saying is, if you're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. Right. There's no such place as purgatory. Right. I'll give you a $1,000 if you can show me purgatory in this Bible. There's no such place. There's heaven, there's hell. There's up, there's down. There's in, there's out. There's no in between. There's positive, there's negative. Thank God there is a heaven. The old saying is to die. He's so heavenly minded that he's no earthly good. Though most people I know are in no danger of that whatsoever. Most Christians tonight are so earthly minded, they are no heavenly good. I know there's a heaven tonight because the Lord put something in my heart when I was 18 years old. Anybody who knows me knows that something happened to me when I was 18. I'm the least of God's children, don't claim to be much. I, I'm, the, I'm the sorriest Christian God's God. But I'm going to tell you one thing here this evening, brother. God done something for me when I was 18 and put something in there that was not there before and never has left since. I'm like that little boy that said once in a while, they said, well, he's out flying a kite one day holding a string. And this fellow came up and said, what you doing, son? He said, I'm flying a kite. That thing doesn't going to pull him out of sight, up in the clouds. He said, you're flying a kite. He said, that's right. He said, I don't see it. He said, well, it's up there. And he said, how do you know it's still up there? He said, because every once in a while, I feel it tough. Yeah. And I want to tell you something this, this evening. Yeah. Every once in a while, you feel some kind of just tug on you, don't you? Yeah. Don't you? From another world, from the, from the, from the heavenly world, you feel something tugging. Amen? Your 
the Bible said, set your affection on things above. In the Bible, there are three heavens. You understand? Three heavens in the Bible. The first heaven, you see right out of here in the daytime. It's where the birds fly. The Bible calls that heaven. Birds fly around it and you see it in the day. The second heaven, you can walk right out there and see it in the night. You see the stars and the planet. That's called heaven in the Bible. The first heaven, you see by day. The second heaven, you see by night. The third heaven, you see by faith. And the Bible said, the old song said, there's a land that is fair than day. And by faith, we can see it afar. The third heaven is up under where God lives this evening. I'm going to talk about heaven just for a few minutes tonight. Now remember, you're going to be there one day, so you might as well learn. When these people were up here a while ago, and that boy was jumping around, I, I saw some of your faces, and some of you people looked like, oh my goodness, what is it? Oh no, we're in one of them weird churches. I mean, he's probably going to bring a snake out of the pulpit in a minute. I mean, something terrible. He's going to... He said, I got on the baby hand suit, you know. I was start knocking them in the head, knocking them in the floor. No, no, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. Nobody falls on their back in the Bible. Nobody falls on their back in the Bible. That's worshiping the Lord. There's a Bible, the Bible said when Jesus healed a man, he went walking and leaping and praising God. So when that young man was praising the Lord here a while ago, he was right in order according to what that Bible said. If you don't believe in praise the Lord, you're going to be mighty uncomfortable in heaven. Oh my, I dread this for some of you folks. I say, you believe that you come to church and sit like a wooden Indian and go to the ball game street like a mansion Indian. That's what you believe. You believe you're not supposed to be emotional about church, but you're supposed to be emotional about a motorcycle or a ball game or a midget. I've seen them. I've seen them game shows on TV. You know, when this guy come out, he'll pull out a card and he'll say, uh, all right, our next contestant, Susie Q, come on down. And boy, when he does that, Susie Q sitting about right back here somewhere in the crowd. She's got on a big old stupid looking sweatshirt, big mouse ears, and you see him, and you see him, and she does like this. She's sitting in here like this, and all of a sudden she goes, Send that old grandma. Oh, listen, everybody listen. That's good. 
Little Roman in the back, come here. You hear about that story, that old grandma? That old grandma went to church, and every time she went to church, she shouted. Like mamas do at ball games. Grandma went to church one Sunday morning, and the choir got up and said something about Jesus. And when it did, she jumped up and went, Woo! Hallelujah! Like the old grandmas used to do. Some of you grandmas here tonight don't do that no more. You got backslid. Your kids are praising God, and you're home watching soap operas now. But year, years ago, Grandma praised the Lord. And the mute minister was up front and embarrassed him. It embarrassed him. You know there's something wrong with you when people praise the Lord and embarrass you. Somebody shouts and it embarrasses you. Some, you go to some church and say amen, and everybody in the church will turn around and look. And say, oh, that, my friend, is a messed up church. They're going to be saying amen in heaven. They're going to be saying, help me God in hell. This is the Christ world we're ever going to live in. And the minister looked at his friend and he said, we got to do something. Get her out of here. Get her out of here. And she's, we got doctors and lawyers and big shots, and she's going to fit them. They gave a lot of money. So the ushers come down there and say, said, man, you got to calm down. You got to be quiet. She said, hey, what? She's thinking about getting saved. Yeah. And they said, they got her out. One got under one arm, and one got under the other arm. And they was carrying her down the middle aisle. I kept their feet just a dangling like right there. And she was going out the door, and somebody heard her. She going out the door, and she said, praise the Lord. She said, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, he came in on one donkey. But she didn't say donkey. And I got two. Staggering through the house like that, 
pull up, pull up right in that seat like a die. She come back in a minute, he's sitting over there just bawling. She looked at him, she said, what's wrong with you? He said, honey, you told me I was gonna puke my guts out. You kept telling me, and I did. But he said, by the grace of God, that big spoon right there, I got him right down.
And the devil been trying to knock me out since 1979. When New Man Baptist Church was a year and a half old. And I'm not even supposed to be here. I'm not even supposed to be alive. And if there's one thing I proved tonight, it's if God has a plan for a person's life and he's got his hand on it, they ain't enough demons or devils in hell or Baptist preachers or brethren or sisters to stop what God wants to do. You hear me tonight, brother? God's bigger than anybody. God's bigger than anybody. And the God that lives in my heart tonight is greater than anything this world got. Right there, I said. I'm not going into details. Some of you do know the details. My oldest sister got cancer. When she was 35 years old. And my sister was so healthy. She never got sick. Never got sick. Run races, marathons. She could do anything. Sandy could do anything. When she got sick, the doctor told us. He said if she makes it three years. She'll be all right. Three years it was back, and I don't, I don't want to hurt my family here tonight, but God saw fit to let it take her. I saw my mom sitting here tonight, sit beside her and hold her hand while she suffered. And one time Cindy looked at mom and she said, Mom, I hope I never have to go through this again. And mom said, do you want her? Amen. 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 She's, she's a whole lot better off than we are. God took her out of this world on the 4th of July, 1990. My daddy shook his head, walked out of the house that day, went home, cranked up the lawnmower and started mowing grass. And I went home and daddy's laying there. And six months later, he dropped dead with a heart attack. We had all the other personal problems, me and my sister here. And if you live long enough, you're going to have yours. Yeah. You know why I want to go to heaven? I want to go to heaven tonight because there ain't going to be no such stuff as that. There ain't going to be no disease. There ain't going to be no divorce. There ain't going to be no broken homes. There ain't going to be no broken hearts. You don't have to worry about your kids. Everybody's here. I'll see my sister again. She'll be in perfect health. My daddy got saved. Daddy come through the kitchen one morning, had a, bottle, had a bag full of liquor, and set it down on the kitchen table and said, that's it. And he was going street preaching that morning. And I said, what, daddy? He looked up and he said, I was down on the knees last night in the middle of the night. And he looked up and said, I felt it when it came. And buddy, I'll tell you what, God done something for my daddy. God done something for my sister. We're all going to be together in heaven one of these days. You know why? Heaven's a place where there'll be no suffering people. You want to get ready tonight. You want to get ready to go to heaven. The hospitals are full of them. The doctor's offices are filled. I'm glad there be no suffering. I'm going to say something else tonight. I'm like that little boy. You know what else is going to be in heaven? You know what's going to be the highlight of heaven? Do you know why I get to go to heaven and you can go to heaven tonight? Did you know that heaven is a place where there'll be no suffering? It's perfect weather. You can eat anything you want. Go anywhere you want. And take as much time as you want. Never have any kind of problems or burdens or anything at all. Let's go. Let's go. Man. Because a man loved you enough hey. to shed his blood. Hey. You know why I want to go to heaven? Because Jesus is there. Hey. like that man they said they said this little boy said this little boy was born blind born blind and they said this he got about 10 years old his mom had always told him about things and this little boy said uh, they said this great doctor from over in England could perform surgery and this surgery in some cases could go back behind the eyeball and cut, the, cut it and do a surgery and make that little boy see and she said oh honey we're going to do this surgery. I don't know if it will work or not. And the doctor came and performed the surgery. 
And he said, the doctor said when he got done, he said, now ma'am, we don't want you to blind him, the light to blind him. He's never seen before. He said, mom, he said, uh, I want you to put, they got 32 bandages on his eyes. He said, you take off one bandage a day for 30 days. Call me before you take off the last one. I want to be there. So each one day she'd take off a bandage. The next day she'd take off a bandage. The next day she'd take off a bandage. The next day she'd take off a bandage. Ladies and gentlemen, when she got to the last one, she called the doctor the last two. He come over and she said, "Let him out in the backyard. It was a beautiful day, and the sun was shining, and trees, the birds, and the grass was green." She slowly peeled that last bandage off of that little boy's eyes. He squinted a time or two, looked and squinted a time or two. The light was so bright, and he looked around. And he said, "Mama, is this heaven?" She said, no, son, this is our backyard. I tried to tell you how beautiful it was, but you couldn't see. You were blind. Yeah. And he looked around and he said, Mama, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. But he said, Mama, I want to see the man that opened my eyes. She took him over and showed him the good doctor. And I'm going to tell you tonight, one of these days, old brother daddy right here.
young people can live for him. I can believe it for you. Surely you can get up and go to church on Sunday morning if God's good enough to give his life for you and take you to heaven when you leave this world. Surely you can get out of bed and worship him and honor him a little bit. Surely tonight. Surely. Surely. You can walk an aisle tonight say, dear God, be merciful to me, sir. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, I want you to come on down here. Come